Let's talk about writing. The written word is a big deal. I'm not sure if you've heard about this thing called written language, but it's kind of everywhere. You have novels, you have Chinese takeout menus, you have user manuals for your old record player. Uh, without the written word, we wouldn't have anything fun. You wouldn't have books and you wouldn't have movies and you wouldn't have emails and you wouldn't have TikTok. So the written language is incredibly important for us humans to take what's in our brains and communicate it to other people in many, many ways. So one of my main goals this semester is to help you out to increase your written language skills so you can better communicate what is in your mind, your ideas, your thoughts, your views, your opinions to other people in a way that is clear, compelling, and accurate. Now I can hear some of you kind of grumbling and complaining and maybe saying, look, for what I want to do in life, I will not need to read, nor will I need to write. Not only is reading and writing effectively an important part of like having a job, but it's also a connection issue. When you're able to read what has come before, people from thousands and thousands of years of human history telling their story and explaining the world as they see it, on the other side of that, Learning how to write well is your connection to the future. It's your staking a claim saying, I was here, I experienced this life, and here's what I have to say about it. And that connection to the future, that's powerful. That gives you the ability to influence how people think, how they act, and the direction we as a species are gonna take from here on out. That is powerful, and with great power comes great bagels no responsibility i will get it someday i'll get it someday i'll get it someday so it's like this the sooner you learn how to write effectively the better you'll get at it working hard now and struggling through these concepts now improves your ability to do it in the future and you know someday your future self may show up hey yo future plotho and they'll thank you for it. Hey, thank you for making this video so I don't have to, and I can just relax in the future. Oh, well, no. Thank you, future me. I worked really hard on this. Hair looks great, by the way. Yeah, so, yeah, just basic, you know, blow dryer, such like management, a tonic, some salt spray in there. You gotta get some, some salt some spray. spray. Blow dryer. Show it some love. You just wanna let it know that you love it and take care of your hair. You gotta Thanks, love future your hair, me. You know? Bye, you know? Before we get too deep into learning how to write good, there's one thing we need to talk about, and that is this. Tutorials. Yeah, many of you are doing these really, really well. Some of you are struggling with doing them completely, and some of you, well, I mean, you know, right? So I wanna talk about tutorials, why we have them, why we grade them, and why you need to be doing them. Let's go. Now, when I think about tutorials and why they're important, my mind goes directly to, wait for it, video games. Absolutely. So if you've ever played a video game in your entire life, you know that there's a basic way that every game progresses. You know, you don't start off a game and the first thing you're doing is fighting the end boss at least not in a way that you're expected to do a good job with. Video games always start off with a basic task to get you familiar with how the game works, the rules of the game, the mechanics of the game, where the buttons are, your overall objectives. And we call this the tutorial. And it's an important part of learning how to play a game. Because if you don't know how to play the game, you can't play the game. So your tutorials are a lot like playing, for example, Halo. In Halo, they're gonna have a situation where you are first doing things that you're gonna do for the rest of the game. But you're gonna do it in a way that you're not gonna have a catastrophic failure if you mess up because it's a tutorial. Tutorials in Edmentum act exactly the same way. It's an opportunity for you 
as a young learner to explore different ideas and learn the basic mechanics of that unit. So just like starting off with any game like God of War, you're not going to start off by fighting Fenrir, the world-eating wolf. You're going to start off with some basic fundamental tasks. A does this and B does that. Now, for your tutorials, it's very important that in order to benefit from them, you must do them. You've got to do the tutorials if you're going to get any benefit out of them. Now, you may not be perfect or confident or do uh, what you might think is the right job on these tutorials. That's the point. It's an opportunity for you to play around with some new key terms, to think about ideas, and to put yourself in the right position to start learning more about that subject. So for example, here I have a tutorial about ancient Rome. That's gonna ask me, what do you think about when it comes to ancient Rome? When I say the word Rome, what comes to mind? Now I want you to think for a moment about that kind of question. What do you think about when it comes to the word Rome? That's not asking for the right or wrong answer. It's not asking you to correctly identify all of the words we're supposed to think about when we think about Rome. It's asking you about your previous experience. How are you doing? Where are you at? What does this word mean to you? So I'm going to start my tutorial by answering that question honestly. I think about Roman candles. They blow stuff up. That's fun. And I think about... Uh, um, here's everything. I got everything. Just take it all. Julius Caesar salad dressing. Julius Orange Julius from Orange Julius. A delicious orange drink. Now, these are not like the right or wrong answer. Again, it's just kind of like saying, let's get you in the mindset to think about Rome. So, as you go through these tutorials, please approach it like anything else. Uh, that would teach you the basic fundamentals of a thing. First of all, give it your best shot. Don't be concerned about right or wrong. Be most concerned about what is this question asking me and what is my best response to it right now? Number two, take your time. The thing with tutorials is they're going to set you up for greater success later. Now, you could... There's a thousand different ways that you could just kind of sidestep some of these things or look up the answer on Google, or I know that there's a little trick you can do to find the right answer. That's not what we're looking for. It doesn't help you. So in this case, the tutorial is your chance just to kind of give an answer to the best of your ability. And then you'll find as you go through the tutorial and you do this many different times, you will get better as you go. Nobody is the God of War when they start playing God of War. But by the end of the game, going through those tutorials, practicing those skills, using those new skills, you become Kratos, God of War. So if we think by comparison that the tutorial for a video game is just like the tutorial for your lessons, then the summary question of your lessons is more like the boss battle. This is the last stage. This is the final challenge before you move on to the next level. You've been there. You've done that. You've done the reading, you've done the learning, you've asked the questions, you've had the discussions, and now it's time for you to show what you know in a one-on-one -on -one battle with a pretty straightforward question. So let's learn about how to write an effective, complete, and useful summary. Summary questions come at the end of your guided notes. Now, I understand that some students are under the impression that you don't need to do these. Some students sometimes do them and sometimes you don't. So first of all, your answer should be at least three to five sentences long. And the only reason I say this number is because uh, if you were writing in pretty simple, non-compound sentences, 
this is about the bare minimum that I see that you could write to actually answer the type of questions you'll find in a summary. I'm really looking for content. I'm looking for what you have to say rather than how much you have to say. You need to answer all parts of the question. These are what we call critical thinking questions. They require you to process a lot of information and then take that information and compile it, put it together into one complete response. It needs to be detailed and it does have to have those specifics, those clear uh, key vocabulary terms that show, yeah, I understand this. Here's this concept and here's how it applies to the question and here's what I think about it and here's how it all fits together. Now it's easy to say that. So to help you along the way, here's a little bit of an exercise as an example of how we would go about answering these questions. So I didn't want to answer one of the questions from your guided notes as an example mainly because I want to uh, read your thoughts and your perspectives and your conclusions. And if I answer one of those questions in this tutorial video, I'm a little afraid that my ideas and my conclusions would affect yours. So my job is to guide, not to tell. My job is to explain, not to dictate. So let me take this made up question that you will never see in your guided notes, at least for this class, as an example of how to go through this process. So imagine that I have gone through a whole lesson, a whole guided notes and a tutorial all about hip hop history. I would love to take that class. So if ASU offers it, someone, you know, let me know. Here I am at the end of my notes and I see a summary question and it reads, who is the most influential artist in hip hop or rap history? First part of the question. In what ways did they make a meaningful impact on modern music? All right, so the way I see this, I mean, this is not gonna be a question that I can just answer with one or two words. I mean, I could. Let's say I come in here and I say, um, Nas. Now I've answered one part of the question, right? Who is the most influential artist in hip hop or rap history? But there are some issues here. Number one, I don't necessarily agree with the answer of Nas. While Illmatic is one of the greatest albums of all time, I would not say that Nas ultimately is the most influential artist in hip hop or rap history. Definitely top 10, no doubt. But that was my first instinct. It was just the first answer that came to mind and I just bleh, put it on the page. That's a good practice. So instead of putting it into my answer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of collecting my thoughts. Now, you can do this any way that makes sense to you. Maybe you grab an old notebook and you open it up and you get a pencil and you start brainstorming and taking notes and all that, if that works for you. If that doesn't work for you, find something that does. So I'm going to, as an example, just use my Google Docs editor right here to guide you through the process. So the first thing I'm going to do is maybe think through who are maybe the answers I would think about. Nas, Dr. Dre. Um, let's see. We have Fab Five Freddy from the old school. Um, Vanilla Ice. Ice Baby. Uh, Eminem, very influential, sure. <clears throat> um, I'll say Outcast, Big Boy, and Andre 3000. But ultimately, I'm going to kind of like think through my list. This is what we call a brainstorm. And I'm going to kind of zone in on what I think is the best answer from my perspective, understanding that this is not the end of the task. So, I know I'm gonna cause some controversy here. People are gonna have opinions. Your parents are gonna email me and tell me while I'm wrong. And that's great. Let's have the debate. Cause I'm gonna say Dr. Dre is the most influential artist in hip hop and rap history. Okay, now I have my answer, but I'm not done. 
In what ways did they make a meaningful impact on modern music? So now I wanna kind of go through that process again. How could I support my answer of Dr. Dre with details given what I've just learned in this tutorial all about hip hop and rap history? So I'm gonna think back, maybe I go back into my learning, back into that tutorial, back into Adventum, look over the things that I've seen. Maybe I pull up the rest of my notes, review what I have. Maybe my assumption was wrong. Maybe I realize, oh, holy cow, Dr. Dre was not actually the best answer as I see it. Maybe I conclude it's actually um, Pharrell, which would be a solid answer, no doubt. I'm gonna stick with Dr. Dre though. All right, here's why. So I'm gonna say um, NWA, because I know that I've read about the history of NWA, gangster rap, and how that kind of like really made hip hop and rap very popular all over America, rather than just like in the areas they were from. You know, you had great hip hop performers who were very big in their cities, like in New York City or LA or whatever, but NWA really made it a actually a global phenomenon. His album 2001, and then all the people that he had him introduced to the world, we got Snoop, we've got M, we've got Exhibit, X to the Z, we've got all kinds of, we could go on and on about the performers that Dr. Dre popularized by producing their, their music. Now that I've got a bunch of ideas out there, now I want to kind of really dig into the answer. So to answer the first part, who's the most influential artist in hip hop and rap history? I don't want to just say Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre what? If I just walked up to you on the street and I said, Dr. Dre, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. You'd say, no, my name is Ava. I'm not Dr. Dre. Are you Dr. Dre? And I'd say, no, I'm not Dr. Dre. So be clear, Dr. Dre is the most influential artist in hip hop slash rap history, period. So this is what we call a smart answer. It's an answer which includes part of the question in that answer. Who is the most, mean, uh, most influential artist in hip hop slash rap history? Dr. Dre is the most influential artist in hip hop slash rap history. In what ways did they make a meaningful impact on modern music? So now I'm gonna clarify my ideas with complete sentences, which supports the thing I just wrote. He was important because Okay, so I've taken the time to really buckle down and clarify some points with complete sentences in a way that makes sense. And just in case you were noticing, yeah, I realized I said P-Funk, I meant G-Funk. It was based on the music of Parliament Funkadelic from George Clinton, also known as P-Funk, in my defense. I digress. Anyway, here's what I came up with, and this is kind of an example of the end product of all this note-taking and this thought process. So right here, Dr. Dre is the most influential artist in hip hop slash rap history. A statement, now I support it. He was important because, he was important because, because, look at that word, because, important word. Because he created the G-Funk sound, also known as the West Coast sound. This was a combination of funk and rap music. Now what I've done is I've used a vocabulary term, G-Funk. Now to show that I understand what that term means, I've worked in the definition of that term into my description about why it's important. This was a combination of funk and rap music. He was very successful with groups such as NWA, but he also had a very successful solo career. He helped to produce some other great artists such as Snoop Dogg, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar. Now I'm giving some more support to why he's important. He led to the success of so many other artists, including Kendrick Lamar. Ah, oh, man. What would life be like without Kendrick? Without Dr. Dre, modern music, see what I've done there? I brought in the second part of that question, modern music, into my answer, smart answer. Modern music would have less funk influence 
and some of the greatest artists, artists wouldn't exist without him. Now, is this a comprehensive, all-encompassing, totally exhaustive answer? No, but it's good enough. It's shown that I've uh, thought through the question, I've taken it seriously, I've considered many different alternatives, I've brainstormed, I have supporting details to back up what I'm trying to say. And that, my friends, is what makes a good summary response. Not so much about being right or wrong in your conclusions, but taking the right or wrong approach. Provide a complete answer. Provide details that support your statements and make sure that you give some information to show your reader make, that you understand what you're talking about and that your conclusions are based on good evidence. And there it is. I mean, that's all. I know that's a lot. I understand that this is a difficult task. Believe me, um, I, I understand and empathize that learning how to write and learning how to read uh, with that critical thinking skill set, my goodness, it's one of the hardest things we do as humans. But you know what? Here's where I stand. You can do hard things. You're capable. You are completely resilient. You are fundamentally strong. And you may mess this up nine times. You may mess this up 19 times. But if you keep on going, if you push through, you're going to get it. That's a promise. The fact is that we all start off in that tutorial phase, no matter what it is. We're always starting something new, and we're always going to suck at something that we're doing for the first time. So don't be down on yourself. Understand, this is the way it goes. I mean, life would be boring if we just if you picked up whatever you wanted to do, and you were awesome at it, and you didn't have to try. I mean, why would you do anything if you just knew you were going to be great at it? It wouldn't make sense. So embrace the challenge. Embrace your own ability to rise above that challenge. And most of all, keep in mind, we're all in it together. We're all trying to figure this thing out as we go. And uh, we're all in the struggle. So uh, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Take care of your head and your heart. Namaste. Have a great day. And I'll see you next time. Float those help desk.